Welcome everyone to episode 5 of Time for Tech. Let's get started. Our first story today comes from Sprint and AT&T revolving around 5GE. Basically 5GE is just an evolution, so it doesn't actually have any sort of difference in like your phone speeds, at least it shouldn't like massively. It might have a little bit if, it's, if you're like right in like a town where it actually is supported, but it's not really like widespread everywhere. But basically it's been making some customers from AT&T think that their phone is 5G compatible when it's just this extra little evolution on top of it. Sprint has filed a lawsuit against AT&T for false advertising. So earlier this year, AT&T did a 5GE logo on one of their LTE networks. So the companies T-Mobile, Verizon, and Sprint have been criticizing AT&T for this. And what, I, what I've come to believe is that this is a marketing tactic. So what these companies are trying to do is they're trying to get their the customers to think that AT&T is bad and that they're lying to their customers and that, hey, we're truthful, you should come buy our products instead. So it's sort of a way to kick out the competition. All right, so recently, you know how Uber has its system where you can call a person or text someone on the Uber app and get them to come to you, right? So with the new thing that Tesla is doing is making it so there's no driver in this situation here. Let me explain. So, the Model 3 recently, the releases are no longer being like sold to someone else. Once you turn in a Tesla, it, the Tesla Model 3, you can't not get it back. So the, what they do with the car then is turn it into a self-driving fleet. These cars will go out sometime in the morning and will go out onto the street and you can basically like call them up and have them just drive over to you so you can go in some place. It's basically Uber without a car. And so what I'm thinking with this is that Tesla can start using money from people's old cars because like a normal lease where you just turn it in and you have the usually have two options. One, to go and just give it to the dealer and let them take it. Or the other option that you normally have, but the Teslas, they don't have this on the Model 3, is that you can just uh, go and buy your car back and you can go and keep that lease car that you've used and you can put that money towards it. You can't do that with this but instead it's going into that fleet, where I think that Tesla is what they're gonna be trying to do is when these leases are up in about three years, then they can start making money off of this. Yeah. Cause they can basically use like Uber and Lyft, where they'll go and charge people to go and get into the cars and- It's probably gonna be a lot of money considering it's an electric car. It's gonna be quite a bit more than Uber probably. Probably more, but at the same time, you're probably getting a lot nicer of a ride. So instead of a driver being in the car, you just get to get in the car and it will just drive you wherever you want to go. That honestly sounds pretty nice. I mean, if it's, it depends I would find on, that really nice. It depends though on how much extra it's going to cost because if it's like maybe a couple dollars more. Well, I'm thinking it's going to be more on mileage because uh, it, wherever you're going, say it's like five miles away, it will charge you like say $10. But if you're going somewhere like 25 miles away, it's going to be like $40 or something like that. Yeah, so I mean, as long as it's not extremely expensive, then I think that that might be a nicer option for some people. Or if like they can count this as like business expense and just go and hand it over to their employer. So I think this will be a very nice thing for people to use instead of taxis and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I Taxi feel like... and Uber. Just I just feel like this is more and more efficient. It sort of just brings out that futuristic, tacky uh, frontier, I guess. Yeah. And the other thing though is that I think that they should still have maybe like a safety driver or something in this because... Like, well, I'm betting that they'll probably send out the first round of cars and there's probably gonna be glitches and it's gonna be glitchy and stuff, but it will get more advanced as time goes on. But the thing though that, like those, you heard about like the Uber self-driving accident, I, I'll go and put a video right up there. And basically that one didn't go too well because the cars really didn't have a ton of experience. And the thing with Teslas is that they don't have, to, they don't basically have to go and test these on the same road everywhere in the same track because everyone out there who owns a Tesla right now is basically helping Tesla to go and expand that network. Cause all those cars, they have cameras in them and they have sensors and everything equipped for autopilot. And so they're basically just helping Tesla gather billions of miles of data so that's the one advantage that I think they will have over the long term that like Waymo and Uber and some of these other companies are just trying to get into it. 
they might not have all that experience. They might be like really skilled in one city, but not very skilled everywhere. Yeah, and Tesla can, they're sort of like an AI. They learn things more every day. And with more people having Teslas around these days, it gathers more data. So it's able to like grow quicker. Say that it's gaining a, gaining a lead on, say, Uber and Waymo. Next story. All right, guys, to all the gamers out there, we're about to talk about the new Nintendo. So everyone, the Nintendo Game Boy first came out in 1989. Now, over the years since it first came out, it developed a habit of being put in boxes by people who no longer use them because more things came out. But we don't really give it the credit it deserves. Nowadays, we have the things like the PC, the Xbox, the PlayStation. We have the Nintendo Switch. So, and this, all this developed, like, say, off the Game Boy or other things that were back then. And the reason why was mostly because the, basically, at Nintendo, um, I think it was the CEO, he was on a train, and basically, he just wanted, like, a better way to go and be able to play games or to go and do something and pass time. So he decided, hey, why, why don't I just go and make a portable gaming system? And he built this up back in 1989, and it's been... Known as one of the most indestructible pieces of gaming, there's one that actually survived a nuclear attack, and it like still turned on. Like it was all like, mold, like the plastic was all like molded, and it did not look super great, but it still worked and it still played Tetris, and so it's pretty cool. Like this is basically the start of mobile gaming and how we got all these like games into phones and all these kind of other versions like Nintendo Switch. Like that's one of the biggest things right now, and that wouldn't have been possible without this iconic Game Boy. All right, so you're probably wondering why we're talking about this. Well, the Nintendo Game Boy just recently hit its 30 year anniversary, which is pretty big for that. All right, so this topic's gonna be pretty short though. You're probably wondering, oh, your topics are usually longer, but there's not really much to touch on this, but by, say, by saying thank you to Nintendo for giving us the gaming room we have today. So congratulations to Nintendo for the 30 year anniversary for the Game Boy. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to more tech videos. If you see that notification bell right next to that subscribe button, feel free to go and click that too. That will notify you either through email or a notification on your phone whenever we post a new video. As always, I'll see you next time on Tech Device News.